Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, participating on the session two of the Small Ruminant Series. Today, we are going to have two presentations. My name is Isabella Toledo. I'm the Regional Dairy Extension uh, Specialized Agent. And the first presentation will be presented by Justina Dacey. She's the Natural Resources and Agriculture Extension Agent at the Nassau County. And the title of her presentation is Herd Health. Uh, hoof trimming. So with that, I turn it into you, Justina, and you can start uh, your presentation. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, good morning. So as Isabella mentioned, I'm Justina Dacey, and I'm located in Nassau County. So for those of you who uh, don't know where that's located, it's just between Jacksonville and Georgia is what I like to say. It's kind of a, a no man's land uh, area, but I know some of you are located in Nassau County, and if you've ever been there or gone to visit Amelia Island, you've, you've been through Nassau County. Uh, so first off, I wanna find out though where you guys are coming from. So if you could just take a moment to write in the chat, tell us if you're in Florida, what county, or um, maybe what city that you live in. If you're from out of state as well, tell us what state you're in, uh, or if you're in another country, tell us that as well. So we kind of like to get an idea. So I'll look real quick at the chat and see. Uh, so we have, okay, Seminole County, Sumter County, Volusia County. All right, so you guys are more central, Alachua, St. Augustine. So you guys are, are pretty central Northeast Florida for the most part. Marion. Okay, awesome. So yeah, it's good to kind of get an idea of, of our audience and who and where they're coming from and making sure that I'm not giving recommendations for someone in, in Massachusetts, because that would be very different. Uh, so to start off today uh, to cover hoof care. So just like your, your nails on your hands or your feet, uh, goats and sheep, they have of course hooves that are made out of a durable protein uh, keratin that's on their feet though. And just like us, these hooves, they're constantly growing. Uh, and of course, they need to be maintained for their health and for their comfort. Uh, in the wild, typically a goat or a sheep would pretty much have natural wear down of their hooves um, due to the environment. So rocky terrain, moving around much more. But of course, in more of a uh, producer environment or even having them as a pet, we need to maintain these hooves to keep up with their well-being. Uh, if they're not maintained though, this can cause diseases. Uh, this can actually make it very uncomfortable for them to walk. And so they really need to be checked uh, for to prevent these diseases and to stop any sort of excess growth. As you can see here, um, they kind of have that, that elf shoe shape over time if you're not maintaining these hooves. Uh, so if an animal does have uh, abnormal hoof growth and chronic hoof disease, uh, really the best recommendation is to cull it. And this is really the best method though to protect the rest of your flock or your herd uh, so that they don't get this disease as well because some of these diseases are very contagious and I'll talk a little bit about those uh, later. So again, kind of covered why we trim, but really we want to uh, make sure that no diseases begin. We want to allow that air to uh, to reach in between the hoofs so we eliminate any sort of bacteria that's going to grow there and cause that infection uh, to prevent any lameness. And again, trimming creates a really nice uh, flat sole surface so that that mud, any sort of feces, they don't get as easily trapped in there. And again, that's where that bacteria can build up and cause those infections. And then lastly, of course, trimming just allows that proper hoof growth uh, for young animals so that they can go and live on for longevity. So when should you trim? A lot of people ask this question, how often should I do it? And they always want kind of a, a hard number. Um, but the amount of time between trimmings can really vary from monthly to as needed to never. And that's because of a variety of factors. Uh, so really one of your biggest ones is going to be the type of terrain on your farm. Uh, if your sheep or goats live in a more rocky area, they might not need trimming very often. Um, they may not need trimming at all. If they're on soft pastures, they'll most likely need it much more often. 
Uh, when it comes to the age of the animal, this can make a difference for your older small ruminants. They're not going to be moving around as much. They're not going to have as much wear and tear. So you actually might have to um, trim them more often uh, compared to a younger, younger sheep or goat. Their level activity. So that's basically comes down to their age and of course, um, how much space they have. So if they're out in a pasture with lots of rocks moving around, again, they may not need it much, uh, but you know, moving a lot more can help. And then of course your nutritional level, just like us, uh, we see deficiencies in our, well, vitamin deficiencies show up in our nails, same thing with their hooves, but if they're getting a really good nutritional diet, they're probably gonna have a really good hoof growth. And then lastly, genetics, um, just like us, it can be different based on a breed or based on, again, the genes within that uh, group you have. So the best thing that you can do is become familiar with the environment that you are working with, but also keep really good accurate records of when you do perform um, hoof care on your animals. So this will help you determine when is the appropriate schedule for your herd. And lastly, of course, uh, one of the biggest indicators of when you need to trim or there may be a problem is that if there's any difficulty or reluctance to walk or any sort of bending of the knees. So to accomplish that proper hoof trimming, of course, you're gonna need the proper tools to get the job done. So the following tools are actually kind of listed in an order of importance, but you don't have to have everything on this list. Uh, when you start out, but eventually you might want to have some of these tools. So of course, number one is going to be our hoof shears or trimmers. These can be purchased uh, between, these can be purchased online. They can be found uh, in stores. Typically they'll run you from about seven to $15. Uh, again, very, they have very sharp blades uh, and they're spring loaded to make that clipping much easier. So the best trimmers that we typically say are the ones that lock in a closed position. They have a wrist strap so that you can keep them from flying out of your hands in case your sheep or goat kicks um, or thrusts and jolts in any sort of way. If you do have older trimmers, make sure to keep them sharp. Um, if they're dull, change them out, get new ones. Uh, and of course, you can see there's lots of different varieties out there when you start looking online, everything from smooth or serrated to uh, ones with rotating handles. And then if you have a very large um, herd or flock using the air compression driven, th that'll allow you to get a lot of animals done in a, a quick amount of time. So second is a hoof knife. Again, you can find these online or in stores. Uh, they can be straight or curved. And this is an item that kind of is a personal preference. Some people uh, really like to use them. Other people are terrified they're gonna cut a whole hoof off if they uh, use a really sharp knife. The next item, just buying a very simple inexpensive brush that you can use with water to scrape that mud and other debris off from the outside of the hooves. Uh, these will be thrown away over time though because they'll pretty much just get too dirty to even clean. But if you don't have a brush, you can just use a rag, um, that'll do as well. And then of course, a file or hoof rasp um, or hoof plane. So these are kind of used more for the finishing touches, kind of getting that really nice smooth hoof. Uh, it's not necessary for routine trimming, but it is recommended uh, to use before you maybe are showing your animals so that they have very nice looking hooves. Uh, the best ones though we think are usually the have a fine or coarse side depending on the amount you need to take off. And then lastly, just having some sort of spray bottle um, with some zinc sulfate in it to spray on the hooves after you've done some trimming. And then of course gloves just to be safe for you and your animal. So before uh, you start your trimming though, something you might wanna try with your animals are actually practicing restraint techniques, getting them used to, of course, um, having this, this done. So for sheep, um, one of the suggestions is to tip the animal on its rump. Uh, this can work really well, also using a chair. So you can kind of see here, the sheep, um, it looks very happy actually getting its, uh, its manicure there. <laughs> and so, um, the other options though are you can use a tilt table. Uh, you may know someone who has one of these, but this is kind of just where the animals sort of squeeze between uh, two layers on their side. And there's a variety of um, versions of this. So there's half tilts, full tilts, automatic ones. 
uh, for, for goats, but for sheep as well, you can use the standing method. Uh, again, this is probably what most people do. Uh, if you're going to use this route, you can place the sheep or the goat up against a fence and uh, or maybe use one of your milking stands or some sort of trimming platform. Make sure they're you know tied up, uh, but make sure you're not tying them by the neck or, or anywhere that could harm them. Uh, and so again, these are techniques you can use. You can get a second person to help you. Um, that's always very helpful. And um, you just kind of need to practice this with your animals to make sure what, what technique might work with them best. So there is a good time and a bad time to, of course, trim hooves. Uh, you don't want to do this during the late gestation. If you can, try to do it in conjunction with maybe some other management tasks that you're doing on the farm. Uh, for sheep, maybe you're shearing that day and you're getting that hoof trimming in at the same time. If you show your animals, it's best to trim the hooves about two to three weeks before a show. And lastly, when the hooves are at their softest. Uh, so typically this is when um, they're out on more like wet pastures. Uh, that'll kind of be the better time. If you're in a more northern climate, although most everyone here I think is in Florida, uh, you want to be aware of what the colder weather will actually make their hooves a little bit harder. So it might be harder to do. So kind of planning to do your trimming during those warmer months. So this year is actually a really great graphic. Um, unfortunately, you know, we would love to show you how to do this in person because it's just kind of the best way to learn these things. Uh, hopefully in the future we can do that. But I thought this graphic did a really good job of showing sort of the general trimming procedure. And this is for, for goat's hoof, but it works as well for sheep. Uh, so I'm going to kind of just talk you through this. Uh, so of course you want to have the proper restraint method. Uh, you want to make sure that you're calm, but as well as the animal is calm. And you want to make sure that they're not going to jolt or thrust causing any sort of injury to you or anyone else. If you're using the stand-up method, uh, so here in number two, you want to grab that one leg by the ankle or the pastern uh, and bend it back. Again, you want to make sure it's it's a natural bend, um, so it's not awkward or, or forced for them, because again, sort of might make them fall over. With the point of your hoof trimmers or shears um, or a brush, you can remove any of that hardened debris, manure, look for rocks, definitely remove those in the hoof. Um, and then your next step here, which is number, uh, I guess number three here. So uh, snip off that outer hoof wall flap. And so we have kind of, think of your, your hoof wall in the outer part and your sole here. So you're gonna kind of trim away all of that growth there. Uh, and, and you basically just trim a little until you see that, that white part of the pad or the sole. And you want to make sure that you're trimming uh, looking at the growth rings parallel to the hairline. And so that's kind of a, a good way to indicate that you're getting sort of that flatter, uh, proper angle. And trim away from any of those ragged edges of the hoof wall. And then of course, trim that soft part of the heel one tiny slice at a time until the, the heel is level as the toe. Uh, the rule is if you start to see any pink, you wanna stop then because that means you're getting closer to the, the foot's blood supply. Uh, if you do, though, accidentally get too close and bleeding does occur, uh, sprinkle the area with some blood stop powder, but also you can use some, some disinfectant. Uh, so here this kind of goes through it and it's a really nice visual, but you can easily, uh, there's lots of videos out there that kind of show you how to do this. Um, so for now, that's what you can probably look up if you're not feeling as confident. Uh, but making sure that you also disinfect the tools between animals, just because it if there is any disease going on, you don't want to pass that on to your next animal. Uh, so I meant to kind of give a warning on these photos here, but uh, just to go over some hoof diseases that you want to look out for. Some of the most common ones are foot scald, um, foot abscess, abscess, and foot rot. So all these are caused by bacteria that you find in dirt. Um, some of our less common ones are laminitis, uh, blue tongue, sore mouth, and foot and mouth disease. So for these diseases, of course, prevention is always the best way. Um, doing any sort of preventive maintenance to reduce the changes 
of foot rot or reduce the chances of foot rot appearing on your farm because foot rot is uh, very contagious but also can be very common. Uh, so most likely, how does how does anyone get this hoof rot on their farm? Uh, it occurs when you have a goat or sheep that's on a wet pasture for extended periods of time. So here in Florida, that can be very common based on your pasture situation. Uh, so just the spaces between uh, the two digits, pretty much if they're clogged up with mud and dirt, uh, that's not allowing any sort of air and it's pretty warm and moist. And then you get bacteria buildup and eventually can turn into an infection. Uh, so here I have some photos that kind of show you what hoof rot can look like in, look like in a goat but as well um, as very advanced in sheep. And so when you're trimming, you wanna look for any sort of these signs. You wanna look for um, moist inflamed tissue that's between the claws, mild to severe separation of that hoof wall uh, and any sort of black tarry appearance. And so this hoof rot can appear in one foot, but also in all of them. And then of course, pass on to the other animals at your farm. Uh, so unfortunately, it can cause severe uh, lameness and, and you in the end may have to call that animal. So it's best to, to use preventative measures and again, reducing any sort of moisture or wetness um, in the pasture. So some things you can do to keep that foot rot um, off of your farm. A lot of times it's, it's usually uh, introduced when you buy a new animal. Um, but again, making sure you make a biosecurity plan and you follow it. Um, make sure you don't buy animals from flocks or herds with a history of this disease or have any noticeable lameness. Of course, you wouldn't want to buy an animal like that. And then, of course, um, any sort of new animals that you think have it should be quarantined for a minimum of three weeks. So. I'm just gonna go really quickly. So during that quarantine period, you wanna observe all your new animals, make sure you carefully expect, inspect each foot, and then of course, closely trim the hooves and spray each foot with a solution of 20% zinc sulfate. And at that end of the period, uh, you wanna retrim if that's necessary, uh, look for any signs of infection. If there is any evidence, make sure that you uh, do a foot bath with a 10% solution of zinc sulfate to your whole group of animals. Uh, so I think my time is up, but uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and uh, we'll probably do a follow-up email and let you guys know sort of what we come up with. So thank you guys for, for listening and um, I'm gonna pass it on to Isabella at this point, so. Hi, <clears throat> Justina, you did have one question. Um, is it ever necessary to trim any of the soft heel? Uh, so yes, it kind of depends, I think with the age, um, but sometimes they do have kind of that extra piece and you want to make sure that all of that is sort of flat and level. I'm trying to pull up the chat real quick. Okay, so I see. At what age should you begin to trim goat heels? Um, that's a good question, but I would say based on just looking at the heels and seeing if there's any overgrowth beginning, and really that's when you'll kind of know, and you'll sort of see that hoof wall um, either curve in or actually curve out, so you'll, you'll kind of know just by looking at it. 